To all my Forex traders out there and to those that are beginner traders uh, interested in trading futures, stay tuned. Definitely watch the video. I'll be breaking down, you know, uh, how you can actually go about making great money trading these markets, these future markets like the NASDAQ uh, futures, the even the S&P 500 futures, uh, gold, whatever it is that's your preference of choice of markets that you probably were trading uh, over in the Forex markets. You can come over to futures and trade the uh, these markets and, and make great money. All right, I do this on a daily basis, and it has earned me a living on uh, uh, you know every day that I do it. I wake up, I can catch a, a setup or two, and be done. And that's the key that I uh, I just as well want to talk about. Uh, if you are trading, uh, please uh, limit the number of trades that you're taking. You know, I'm not going to tell anyone you know specifically what to do. You know, because it's your money. It's it's you know, you may have your own uh, strategy that, that you're actually trading, but I'm going to show you the strategy and how I trade. And I'm not here to force anyone's hand and tell them to trade like me, but I want to share with you what, what has been working for me in the future markets. And um, uh, and just as well, you, you could trade this, this this type of strategy over in the Forex. I haven't tested it for one myself, uh, but I'm just telling you that I have always been since day one a futures trader and this has worked for me. OK, now I trade range based charts and if you know anything about top-down analysis, please do your biggest yourself the biggest favor and look at your higher time frames or higher base charts, whatever you're using, whatever charts you're trading, um, whatever type of chart uh, style charts you're trading. Meaning, you know, if you're trading volume or tick or myself range or time, whatever you're, you're using, definitely use a top-down analysis approach to determining the direction of the market. Um, and the reason why I say that is because you have to be mindful of what's, of what's resting above you and below you. Because when it surrounds trading supply and demand, you could be trading, say, specifically from a lower time frame chart, and you may be uh, hitting up, say, for example, you may be wanting to go um, short right here, right? And your lower time frame is showing you that, uh, your lower base chart is showing that you should be taking or having an interest in going short, but you got a major area of demand resting below on a higher base chart. Or the difference of uh, versus where if maybe you're looking to actually go long, but you're longing into a major supply area on a higher base chart as well. Pay attention to the higher time frames. Now, multi-chart confluence is specifically the way that I love to trade, especially where I have a zone resting on in the inside of another zone. It works great when that happens, meaning if I mark off, off, off of a higher base chart, a, a higher base zone, and then the market retraces to it, yeah, it took this two days to come back. Well, actually, this was on Friday, I believe. Right here, Friday, yeah. And it took two days for it to come back. Say two, you know, basically, well, the next business, well, no, two business days pretty much because today's the 29th. So it didn't tap into it yesterday, Monday, the 28th. It took until the 29th for it to come back to it. When it hit that zone, okay, this is a high probability, uh, aggressive buying area of demand where there's a valid gap resting back at. I can almost expect there's going to be some reaction at that zone, you know, as long as we don't have major news around this time right here which we did have news today at 10 but still uh you have to be mindful of news what i'm trying to say as well so i'm gonna show you uh a few setups that i took but what i want to talk about is, is more than anything is really identifying the higher base charts first and what's going on and then start to look down your lower base charts before you make an entry by doing this you could you will find yourself making great money taking great setups executing great trades now, when I'm looking at the market, I'm paying attention to structure as well. All right. If I'm looking at the structure of the market here on the higher base, well, it was making higher highs and higher lows, breaking structure to the upside. But then we started to what? Push down, correct? Breaking a bit of structure back down to the downside. But that's okay. But my, my biggest thing I really need to identify because these are valid zones on the higher base chart, like that right here, demand, supply, demand. When the market taps that, you basically want to look at your lower base chart. One, and see, well, first of all, mark it off. And then, one, go to the lower base chart and see if there is, if there's any, uh, smaller zone within this higher base chart demand zone or higher base supply zone right here. If not, then start looking at your lower base chart to see if the market, if it came down to this demand zone, all right, off the higher base chart, then look to see if the market is, reacting and starting to break structure to the upside on your high i'm assuming your lower base chart and look for a setup and vice versa we we retrace back here to the upside we, we're tapping to now you know you see this area of supply resting right here off the higher base chart expect some reaction 
if we start to get a bearish activity to the downside on our lower base chart, then look for setups to take short opportunities, what I'm trying to say. I'm going to show you now. The market tapped off this zone right here um, around 945 today. I then moved down to my lower base chart. Okay, simple as that. I looked to see if there was a zone rested on the inside of the zone where the market could tap into, meaning on my 24 range chart, which is my lower base uh, time frame or lower base zone, I'm looking to see if there is a zone down here, which is it, this large box is that zone that I marked off off the 120 chart, uh, range chart. There wasn't though. So in this case here, I'm down on my 24 range chart, right? We're looking bearish. We, we see all of this price action activity and that's the key to it is following structure and price action. It taps into the higher base 120 zone. What I'm looking to see then is I like to see because I there's not clearly a zone, a smaller zone on the inside of the 120 range larger chart zone, then I want to see where the market's breaking structure to the upside, okay? Because we're tapping into a major area of demand. Now, if we get a structure break to the upside and the market comes back and taps back into the higher base zone, and then there's a smaller base zone, then I'll take interest in taking that the opportunity or trade. But you have to understand just as well that that may not always happen. But as long as the market is continuing to break in structure on the low, lower base chart, the 200, I mean, excuse me, the 24 range chart, after tapping into and bouncing off of the higher base demand zone, okay, the higher base charts, they trump all, okay, all right, then I'm still going to be interested in taking a long position as long as we're breaking structure to the upside on the lower base chart. So this being a push up, we broke the first area of structure to the upside, pulls back, there is a demand zone resting right here on your 24 range chart, okay, and in doing so, once you get so we got a zone here. It actually pulled back into the 120 range, still demand zone. We got a valid, fresh demand zone on the 24 range. Then look for the break in the candle. You're going long right above here at 20,447 and look to take your, you know, aim for profit above. Typically speaking, what I like to do is aim for areas. I'm looking to the left now to see if there's gaps that need to be filled. On the way back down a retracement to the zone, all these gaps have to be filled. So you can almost assure the market's going to run this high right here at 469 and possibly start filling in some of these uh, gaps back to the upside. And you can see what it did. It broke above that high there and pushed all the way back to the upside, filling these gaps back into the top. But before it actually came up and tested this last area or this gap right here, all right, uh, with this highest rest in that, this, is another, this would be another breaker structure once it broke that area to the upside, it actually pulled back. This right here was an area in which I took a trade from, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why. I missed this opportunity here, okay? So I, at that point there, I'm having to wait for another setup to unfold. And so when it broke this first area structure, pulled back, tapped into the demand zone on the 24R, missed it. Then pushed up, broke structure here. It didn't pull back. I was looking at this area right here, but it didn't pull back to it. Pushed up, broke a small area of, of uh, structure above this area here, pushing to the upside, came back to this demand zone right here. And this is where I executed my trade that I posted over on the Discord. The first trade that I took this morning was right here in this area. Now I just scalped this on this pullback to this uh, small area of demand right here. Okay, but we did have where the market was broke structure here, broke structure here. That's once we see that, you know, where it's breaking structure to the left, we get a pullback, breaking this high here on a structure to the upside then that's a definite signal that they are trying to push higher. And we had to bounce off of this major area of demand resting down here. They're going to push up and start testing some of these areas to fill in these, these gaps. There's a gap uh, resting right here that needs to be filled. And then right here, definitely. There's a gap on, these, on this candle here and on this candle here that need to be filled back to the upside. At least back to this area, you can take in the trade up to uh, and then a pullback and then it starts to move move higher testing higher areas because we've tapped into off of a higher base zone and then on the lower base zone we start to see where it's breaking structure to the upside so you have to understand anytime it hits or taps a major area of supply or demand off of a higher base chart then you're waiting for the setup but it's going to most likely re react there unless we have news or something going on in the market to so where it's just really trying to flush and push hard to the downside or push hard to the upside and just break breaking through straight through areas or levels okay if you miss this setup here, look what happens then. It goes up, fills the gaps in any, right here. There's a gap right here. It fills it all the way back up to the top right here. Takes out this high right here. Now we got another break of structure, okay? Then it pulls back. We got another structure break to the other. And then you have a uh, demand zone resting here on the 24 range, okay? We're bullish uh, on the 24 range as you can see here, all right?
So I'm taking my trades directly off the 24 range in this case here. And you have to understand that smaller base charts, you have to understand that um, the moves may not be as big uh, on smaller base charts or setups than they would be, be with if the market had tapped into a higher base chart or a higher, you know, higher base chart zone. Um, and then you're looking for opportunity on the 24 hour. So like, like right here, what it tapped into this higher base zone here and then it started breaking structure on the 24 range right here. Well, you knew it was going to, Possibly something's going to react there because I say untapped, unmitigated zone that had that is fresh, so it's aggressive area of, of buying right here. You know something's going to happen when it gets back here, so that's why I was looking for opportunities when we started seeing these structural breaks to the upside. But anyways, uh, it pulls back here. There's another fresh area of uh, a zone here that's untapped. You can look for your opportunity there. Okay, where are you going to get the trade? Get in here at the break 509. Take it back up this is where it starts filling in you know these gaps back to the upside all your back up to here there's plenty of them all right and then it, it uh pushes up okay pull back don't have a quite break of structure yet but then it breaks structure right here to the upside breaking above this area right there and before it did that what i was paying attention to as excuse me as well was this movement here to the upside now we're still bullish here on the 24 range uh to the upside right here and when it pulled back right here, you see this swing low right here, okay? Kind of moving sideways in a wedge right here. But still, there's a swing low right here. When the market pulls back here, it creates this area of support right here. But if you look when it pushed back up and then came back down, this area here, you have a double bottom pretty much. You know, you have two lows resting right here. It swings right below it, okay? It swipes it. So what is that? That's a liquidity sweep. So areas where you have liquidity just as well where it's being taken out, most times they're going to grab, say, a low or, or, or highs, uh, you know, multiple highs or lows, and then they're going to move in, the, in, in their, the same intended direction which they're moving. So they come down here, they create this area of support, they wipe this area out by ticking right below it, grabbing liquidity. You could have went long right here as well at 522 off this liquidity sweep. I'm showing you that there were multiple setups within the market today in which you could t uh, take, okay? Then uh, the second trade that I took was off this, this opportunity right here. Uh, let me erase this because that was just like a, a risk reward to uh, something I had pulled up at the time. But anyways, uh, it broke structure to the upside right here. We broke above these highs right here. Then it comes back. There is a beautiful area of demand. We are in a bear, excuse me, a bullish uh, channel to the upside here on the 24 range chart. You have to be able to see things like this. Okay, it's breaking structure, breaking structure, breaking structure, coming back, demand zone resting right here. You can bet your bottom dollar that something is going to tap or I mean, going to happen right here. Another reason why this was a great zone uh, was right here. If you take a look, when it broke higher right here, this is what it looked like on the, on the higher base chart. Pushed up, came back. This was a valid demand zone now off of the higher base, 120. We're breaking structure to the upside. We broke above these highs here on the 120. So with that said, and we're bullish as well on the 24 range, this is a beautiful area of demand to look for an opportunity to trade from, okay? The market comes back to this area here, get into the trade. You can get in aggressive and wait, wait for the uh, the first break here at 20, uh, or break first uh, close of the candle here at 20,533 if you want to, or wait for more to where you get the break and close of a candle at 539. Look, all these areas have to be filled. These small gaps in between these candles all the way back up here. And if you, excuse me, let me erase that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, get, uh, rid of this channel too. And as you can see here, the market goes up, fills all the gas back to the uh, upside. Why? Because we tap into the higher base chart demand zone. Okay. There was a gap at that zone just as well. Small gap there. And it pulled back. And if you took this opportunity, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that because we tapped the higher base zone, okay, that demand zone, but we also have a smaller zone resting on the inside of that zone. That's why I was what, what I, I, I talk about in a lot of the videos is zone within a zone, multi-chart confluence, higher base 120 zone, demand zone, lower base 24 range, which is the entry chart, pulls back, and there is a zone on the inside of the higher base zone. Push up, it pulled back, broke structure on the 24 range chart that we execute the trade from, or I, I execute my trades from, and there's a zone inside of the higher base zone. That's giving me more confluence to take this trade. Where am I going to get the trade at? Right here, 539 if I want to be conservative and look to fill up or fill in these gaps between these candles, these red candles, back to the upside. Simple as that. All right. So if you missed that trade there, which was a, well, probably the trade of the day, to be honest with you, uh, unless you caught, caught this setup down here at the bottom, 
Now, if you caught all of this right here and got in and was able to hold this going to the upside, you did extremely well today. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, that's one thing myself. You know, we, we all we're not perfect when it comes to becoming traders or being traders. We just we get we improve and become better over time. I'm working on holding my trades just as well. Sometimes I'll take quick scalps and be out the market. You know, like today I took two quick scalps and I was out the market. OK, um, I didn't plan on trying to, to trying to hold a state into a trades, but. There were some individual, individuals uh, that are part of the Discord that took this trade right here. Hats off to you. That was a solid entry right there. Probably the trade of the day, unless, again, like you took, unless you took this one down here. If you got into this trade right here, all right, the way you stay into a trade like this is that when you got into it and it took out this high right here, then all you're doing is moving your stop up to like right here. Pushed up, pulled back, broke higher, stop goes here, and then it pushes all the way up. So if you got into this trade somewhere around like four, uh, 446, that's you, you stayed in the market all the way to like 516. It comes back. Does it stop you out? If you had your stop resting here at the back end of the swing low, or making this little swing a little higher, uh, um, higher low right here, then it may have. But I always talk about put your stop a few ticks or points uh, back below this area. So each time that it makes, let me show you, each time that it makes a move like this to the upside, okay, all right, uh, after you got into the trade down here and it broke this area here, it's high here. Put your stop, go here. Comes back after it does it, the same thing again. Each time it swings higher, makes another move to the upside, move this stop up here. Okay, now it's here. And you keep following through with that trailing behind price. And that's how you're going to capitalize and maximize when it comes to uh, your profits. Um, but and what that does too is that it puts you in a position where you're locking in profits. And now, you know, at first you may have, uh, you know, been in a trade right here, it pushed up. Gave you profit, you move your stop or took out most of your contracts, you move your, your, your stop for that trailing uh, contract at the break even. If it comes back to break even and stop you out, nothing lost. If it keeps moving to the upside and you're moving your stop up, you're locking in profit behind it the whole time. Now, if you miss this opportunity right here to the upside, it gave you another chance to take a trade right here. Look what happened. It's moving higher. Okay. Breaking structure to the upside comes back. Off this little swing right here. See this little swing right here? You could have caught it one or two going back to the upside right here. Off this little swing, strictly off the 24 range chart, pushes up, takes out this high right here, demand zone, untapped, unmitigated. There's a gap resting at the zone, high probability zone, comes back to it. Okay, you get the break. You can get in right here if you're aggressive here at 571 or take the break in the close at 577. Take it up to 90. It touched. It, it took out the highs right here, okay? And pick yourself up 13 points right there. There were multiple, multiple setups within this opportunity today to take trade setups. There's probably one um, right here. This is a, a demand zone. Will it bounce there? Okay, we'll wait to see what happens when it gets there. Will it react is what I'm trying to say, not bounce. But react, okay? You have to wait and see. And, and then on top of that as well, Look, the volume weighted average price indicator is moving, trending to the upside, okay? All right, here it was flat, but it's moving higher now. So uh, it may tap this area of the zone right here. We'll wait and see. Let's see if we get some reaction off of it here in a moment. Again, both the trades I took today were right here and right here. Both of them, which I posted over in the Discord. If you're not part of the Discord community, then join the Discord. The link is down in the description portion of the video. And then right below that is another link for all those that won't. Uh, to become an elite member that's where you're going to gain access to the private community of video content that's not published here on the channel I'm talking about the trade breakdowns like the, the, the trades i take and post over on the discord i break them down to the private community so if you want to become an elite member it's only six dollars and 99 cent a month you gain access to all the trade breakdown videos that i've ever published uh to the channel as well as the video playlist and the great video that I covered uh, on surrounding market structure because market structure is everything when it comes to the markets. You have to understand that. Uh, so if you're interested in becoming an elite member, again, scroll down to the, the description portion of the video. You'll see a link right below the Discord. Just become an elite member. Click on it. Two tiers will pop up. Choose the second tier this for $6.99 a month. That's all it is. Very inexpensive, but you get all that valuable content. While well, I break down these trades as if you're sitting right next to me so that you understand the strategy, uh, walking you through the mark market structure, walking through my mindset of why I took that trade, where to place profit target set, and uh, where to place your stop losses at, things of that nature, okay? So, but again, uh, for all those who are not current subscribers here on the channel, please take the time to go ahead and click on the sub button right now. Click on it. What are you waiting on? Turn on your post notifications. Make sure to do so so you do not miss any of the uploads here in this channel. Now, we tap into this zone here. You see what it's doing? It's reacting here. Now, I'm not saying this zone is going to hold up 100%. We have to see. And basically, what I like to do is see if it's going to react by 
uh, you know, giving us a break and a close of a candle above, which kind of signifies that it, it wants to continue pushing higher. So we'll see because uh, it does seem that it's formed a double top here at the top. So this could be a sign of, of reversal to where it's showing weakness to where it may want to push lower. So be mindful of things like that as well to where if it's made a high and now we made a lower high, it could definitely be the sign, a double top right there that it wants to kind of push, push lower. OK, so we have to wait and see. All right. So I took that zone out right there again, like I said, because it's showing weakness at the tops right there. But th that's all I want to show you guys today. And you know, this is how you can make money. Lots of it. Trading the futures. Um, and, you know, it's just basic compounding. The more you compound over time, I'm, I'm telling you, like if you compound day to day to day uh, and maybe use like a technique of, you know, a profitability of trying to gain like four or five percent um profit okay okay that means whatever your account balance is you're trying to compound 45 percent on top of your account balance on a daily basis you're going to see by doing that you're going to start stacking up pretty quick uh and your account size is going to grow fairly quick as well all right so uh let's be mindful of doing that i mean you could definitely you know start off with just you know uh couple thousand dollars or whatever the case is trading futures and you'll quickly watch it grow as long as you're taking high probability setups all right so kind of come up with some metrics for yourself as far as what you're looking to, to actually um profit on the day okay so if you got like a two thousand dollar account maybe you want to be looking to profit like four or five percent on the daily whatever you made on a two thousand for that day cap you know in profit on, on four or five percent then you know that adds on top and then four to five percent the next day four to five percent the next day four to five percent the next day and it just keeps growing that way over time okay that's what i'm trying to say but outside of that that's all i want to share today i appreciate everyone tuning in and watching the videos if you're a beginner trader or something else, again it's looking to, to you know kind of move over and jump from forex to futures you know this is a solid strategy you can try out um you know we have people that are part of the community that use it on a daily basis and not everybody uses you know exactly 120 range higher base chart in 24 some people actually trade and use uh time based charts but you know it, it it works you just need to know how to make it work and understand the strategy as a whole all right that's all i have i appreciate it for all those that are still trading please be success i'll be uh safe in the markets today uh, i'm done i typically like to take, take my trades you know and try to be done by i know later than 10 30 11 o'clock but i'll see everyone in the next one take care